uh, th this particular group, this is what Shastakadi was saying, because this group was saying that that they were worried that if Allah is not like anything of his creation, then you can't say sound and words because that's in creation. Um, so I just wondered, like, if if um, if Allah's word um, is eternal, if someone believes that Allah's word was created or that Allah's word comes into time, does that affect Allah in any way? Right, Jason. How are we doing, man? Hey, right? Jason. Hello, guys. Hi, Hi Jason. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'll see you on uh, 4th of August. We're coming down 4th of August. So, okay. Good to see you. Where are you now? Are you are you in Africa or are you in UK? I'm in, I'm in UK. I'm in Manchester. Um, okay. But, right. uh, I think we're coming down on the 4th of August. So, if you ever want a cup of coffee or something, I'm happy to buy you one. <laughs> we'll see you. We'll see you if, the, if we are there, if the weather's good. Right. Um, what brings you to the panel? I, I, I've been reading. I don't know what you think of. Um, Yasukadi's book, The Sciences of the Quran. I've been reading that and I'm just learning. Right. I'm just learning. Um, and I was surprised about there was debates in Islam in centuries ago on the eternality of the Quran. Is the Quran created or not created? And there were, uh, there was even persecution of different groups, people getting killed. So the point the point that I, the question I have is, is do you believe the Quran was created or uncreated? And what are the implications um, for Islam and Christianity, if whichever view you take? That's my question. So you want to know whether the Quran is created or not? Yeah. yeah and then, and then the implications, whichever view you take, what implications does that have for Islam and Christianity, like in in dialogue and polemics? Okay. So what do you want to compare? Do you want to compare the word of God? Is that what you want to compare in Christianity and Islam? Um, or or um, the implications of the... Um, of created or not. Of um, the nature of God, Tawi, Trinity, deity of Christ, does it affect that in any way or not as well? Okay, anybody wants to take that? Sheikh Ibn Hazm, are you there? I'm okay. here, yeah. Oh, no, no, you look like your screen looked like frozen. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm just, I was, I was miles, I was miles away. I was miles away. I was miles away. So, Sheikh uh, Jason is from Manchester, he comes occasionally yeah. to Speaker's Corner. Uh, I don't think you guys have met, but uh, no, yeah, I don't think so. He's a regular speaker's corner. Nice to see you. Used to nice be, I think it's nice meeting you. Yeah. So I just, so, I just want to say, I've only just yeah. Only let me let me quickly this. summarize this this issue about uh, whether the Quran is created or not. I mean, normally the Christians uh, use the Mu'tazila, uh, the Mu'tazila kind of uh, yeah. yeah. No, but, uh, I'm talking from the Christian perspective. They yeah. they use this as a psychological angle in order to confuse muslims who are not really well versed with this argument so first and foremost the term word of god word okay, of so we god, consider yeah. the quran to be the word of god the christians consider jesus as the word of god the word so of they god think yeah. that how can the word of god be created uh, if the if the quran is uncreated so you should also accept that jesus is uncreated well i'll tell you where the problem lies in this argument First and foremost, we believe that the Quran is, of course, is not created. It's a subset of the knowledge of Allah. It's a speech of Allah. Yeah. We cannot compare the speech with a person. So, for example, if I were to say that um, the words of Jason are better than him, makes no sense in English. Absolutely. Okay. But if I said, the words of Jason are similar to his partner or they are better in vocabulary than his partner, then it's speech to speech. You see, like for like comparison. 
Okay, so that is one thing. The other thing is, we as Muslims do not worship the Quran, nor do we believe that the Quran has its own will. In contrast, Jesus Christ is worshipped by Christians, and Jesus Christ obviously has his own will. So that's another mismatch here. Mm, mm, mm. So you cannot compare and oranges, which is exactly what one is trying to do when they say, is the Quran created or not? And if the Quran is uncreated, then why do you have objection with Jesus being uncreated? He is also the word of God. We are definitely not comparing like for like. Mm. As Muslims, we believe that Isa alayhi salam or uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, was definitely created because Allah gives the example in the Adam. Isa عند الله كمثل Adam. Yes, the similitude of the creation of uh, Jesus is like that of Adam. Yes, when Allah wishes to create something, yes, he created him from dust, meaning Adam alayhi salam, and he says, and, then, and he, he came into being, he came into existence. Yeah. So you see, Adam was, I think he deserves more as being the first creation as being the first human yes not first creation but first human creation yeah and he had no mother or father jesus at least had a mother so if anyone was to be called the son of god yes metaphorically it would be adam but then allah is telling you the similitude of isa or jesus the creation the creation they were both created miraculously one was created adam was created without mother or father uh, and Allah says, Kun fayakun, and he came into existence from clay. He was created from clay. And similarly, Jesus was miraculously conceived in mother's, uh, sorry, Mary's womb mm -hmm. without a biological father. I hope that answers I, your question. I, I think, uh, yeah, I think I, I understand what you're saying, that it's different from person uh, to speech. And I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, in in Jakarta, um, Yes, the card is book. Uh, pr forgive me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, because I probably get this wrong. But yeah. the Asari, there was a group called the Asari or something, and they the Asharis, they, the Asharis, and, and, and they Ashari, believe yeah, the Asharis. Yeah. Uh, sorry, could you say that again so I can get the Ashari, right Ashari, 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 if one of you would teach me Arabic, I would appreciate it. <laughs> um, in the book, I've really enjoyed the book. It talks about that this group said that the Quran, the words and the sounds are not the Quran. Uh, th this particular group, this is what Shastakadi was saying, because this group was saying that, that they were worried that if Allah is not like anything of his creation then you can't say sound and words because that's in creation um so i just wondered like if if um if allah's word um is eternal if someone believes that allah's word was created or that allah's word comes into time does that affect allah in any way Okay. Like let me, I think you're having a before you let, begin, let me, okay. just very briefly, I think what you're having a confusion on is the kalam Allah and the manifestation of it. So like the Quran itself, when we read it from a mushaf or the sounds that we hear is a manifestation of it. So like we can't say that that's like what Allah sounds like, but what we can say is that this is a representation of the, the actual kalam Allah. And I think that might help you a lot. So in like the same way that if you might think, well, Jesus is, a, is a, you know, the word, he is a manifestation of kun fayakun, like be and it is. So like if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a command to the order of existence that you will have an existence of Jesus in a, a, the womb of a woman who has never been touched, this is the command. This is the word. And its manifestation is Jesus in the flesh. So the same way that Allah gave the command to the known existence at the time of Adam, السلام, of kun fayakun, be and you will be, like you now have a soul, you now have a figure, you have a body, you have all the actions and everything working together. This is a manifestation of that. 
in the same way that the known universe was at one point in a state of non-existence, and he says, kun fayakun, be and become, you now have a manifestation of those words as the known universe. Hopefully that helps. You know, you know one thing, one thing which is, uh, you have to bear with me in here to, inshallah, so for you to, to get my point. Allah Jalla wa ala in the Quran says, Innama amruhu ida arada shay'an and in another qira, uh, another place he said ida qada shay'an his decree that when he wa- when he wills something he he only says be and it is you understand me until here okay so the the, the thing against that is goes against those who says that the quran is created allah how does allah create allah does create through speech through command okay so for them for them to say that the the the, the, uh, the speech of allah is created has got no, no value because allah jalla wa ala, for him to create he has to give a command to say be and okay. it will be so it can never be created because allah creates through his command through his speech does that make sense mm-hmm. So the, the yeah. two, just two questions, and then I appreciate it. It's very, been very enlightening. I'm just learning. I'm only quite way through yeah. the book. So I just, I just want to clarify something, Jason. So you know the term Quran can refer to yeah. the physical book or the Mus'haf? So obviously the physical book, the words written in mm-hmm. ink, all those are creations. So th- that is created. But when you are referring to the speech of Allah, Yes, is an attribute of Allah, and attributes of Allah are eternal. They are uncreated. Yeah. So, just wanted to make this distinction, this clarification. Or, or, or also, also the Quran that we recite when I am reciting yeah. the Quran. Yeah, that's that created. Is the, that is what the speech of Allah speech when is created with His words. So, the Quran that I recite, that you can say created, because my speech is a creation of Allah. The Quran yeah. that is in my heart or is in my brain is created because that is my because i am created so but the speech of allah like that's an attribute of allah and the attributes of allah are are eternal so at, at the at the recitations you know the different ways of recitation reciting mm. were those in eternity or were they created like no different... like the sheikh said the recitation this yeah. is our speech not allah's speech even though we are we are reading what Allah revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and then, uh, you know, it, it was propagated down to his companions right. and it came to us through the chain of transmission. We are reciting that that, that is our words, but the speech of, we we cannot compare the speech of Allah with our speech because when we speech. speak it, we are creating speech, speech, isn't it? So that's right, created. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we need yeah. to distinguish between the eternal attribute of Allah or the source and what is now manifested physically okay through the book through the mushaf and through our speech through our memorization so so on so forgive me morris because what you said was quite deep as well and what you're saying guys forgive me so is allah's word in eternity is it ontological is it ontologically the speech is yes Within the speech of Allah within is Tawid, or is it? Say again. Is, is it like is 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 Allah's speech in eternity? Is it ontological in the sense that his speech is one with Allah in terms of ontology? Yes. So you you have the essence of Allah, and then you have the attributes of Allah, and you can't separate the two. And so, are we saying that the word of Allah is is the is the attributes there the speech is an attribute of allah right right yes right 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 right, right. Yeah, and then you have the essence okay. of allah is, is that okay so we got sifat al-fa'aliyya we got sifat al-zatiyya we have the attributes of action the and, attributes and, of, of essence and so on and you know you said before you said sound and word of course the speech of allah is sound and word because when allah jalla wa ala spoke to moses when allah spoke yeah, yeah. to moses 
Moses heard the voice and understood the meaning. So he would have understood the construction of the of the speech and yeah. he would have heard. So of course it is it is sound and letter. Mm. And, and the way, word. Do, you, do you know according to the Bible, Jesus obeyed the word of God? Mm, mm, mm. Which word did you obey? Which word well, we <laughs> We get it. Uh, <laughs> That's in John eight fifty five. No, no, it's the New Testament. John eight fifty five. He obeyed no, the word I mean, of God. I mean, in terms of like obeying, he would have obeyed the the Old Testament, the Torah. So, hey? so the word of God obeyed the word of God. Well, <laughs> the, this is the thing with the Asari. You know, this group that you were saying. The, this no, is no, the it's thing. Not. You see. This is the, Jesus. This is the by thing the way. because. Can I just say this? I don't though? think any look any of the previous groups, even the Ashari or the uh, Muhtazili, none of them yeah, would we, deny that Jesus was a creation of God. Yeah, they wouldn't. What's interesting, because it's a good point you're making. What's interesting, Yasakati notes that that group went astray because of hyper rationalism. No, I think you're talking about the Mutazili, the Mutazila, not the Ashari, the Mutazila. So the Mutazila, they believe that the Quran was actually was created. Uh, yeah, but he was he was saying. I think yes, the groups was mixed saying, up. This comes back to your question. Yes. He, he was saying so that. that got the groups mixed up, not the Ashaira. Mutazila. The Mutazila, the ones who believe that the Quran is created. So yeah, this, no, is a, I, this is I've a this is a heretical group. It's definitely, it's definitely because because they they. Um, that group were trying to save the the uh that Allah's nothing like his creation they went too far rationalistically trying to separate um Allah's word coming into 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 time and and they tried to yeah, yeah the Ashaira they say that Allah has spoken in in the in in uh yeah, yeah. in in the past and his and his and his sound yeah. is continuing. So yeah, when Allah yeah. spoke to Moses, spoke to him in the past, yeah, and it. it continued. This that's is it. what you that's mean, it. yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. And yes, Akali yeah. was saying they went too far because of being rush, too rationalistic. And, no, and yes, Allah, Allah saying, speaks. Allah speaks when it is when it is uh, when he needs to speak. Yeah, Allah so speaks so when he needs to speak. Yeah. Yes. But, but like I'm, when I'm he spoke to Musa, to, 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 was just he spoke there example. and then. What I'm trying to get at is the Asha'ira they is, said that he spoke in the past and his and and his kalam continued, brother uh, Hashim. I, I don't this know this about is a, that, but... a genuine question for Hashim and all that. It's not a trick question because when you ask yeah, that yeah, question about the word and, and Jesus, <laughs> at what point as Muslims and Christians do we use logic? What's the limitations of logic? Because in in the history of Sunni Islam and the theologians, what I'm getting is many, many theologians seem to say, be very careful about rational debate, because they were saying that that you can't reason can't fully comprehend uh, Allah. So, at what uh, in in what sense, when we debate as Muslims and Christians about the Trinity and Taweed, um, as Muslims, you you I'm sure you would agree that reason cannot fully grasp. The nature of who God is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. at what point do we respect the nature of God and do not pry into the nature of God? Okay. And how does that we, relate to we that as debate? Muslims, we as Muslims, uh, Jason, we affirm what Allah has affirmed for Himself and His Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has affirmed for Him, and we negate what Allah jalla wa ala has negated. For, from himself and his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his uh, so allah jalla wa ala speaks about hands we say yes our our law our lord has got hands but how his hands are we cannot comprehend as human beings we cannot our 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 thinking is limited to kind of comprehend the yeah, the yeah. how not that there is a how, but it is us, us who are not, we cannot comprehend it. There's an important distinction here in terms of using logic. What we say that in terms of comprehension, 
we might not comprehend something being being us being finite and we're talking about Allah and his essence Allah subhanahu right? wa ta'ala yeah. right but we say that it we don't have concepts of Allah in Islam which contradicts contradictory in Christianity when you have this comprehension issue of course comp you, you may say we don't we do not and we cannot comprehend God in, in his entirety but what you do have is what we call the logical contradiction like trinity in in the case where you know there's father is god the son is god and holy spirit is god and they're not three gods but one god that is something that what we call incoherent it doesn't adhere you know cohere it doesn't make you know a coherent sense in islam you won't find that you can question in islam like how do you say god is for example god has eyes or god speaks you know Here's, the, the, the Here's, rationalist please. might say oh are you saying God has some kind of uh, vocal system like us and so on? And how can that be? Because you cannot make comparison. You know, this comprehension issue is one thing. We say, as the Sheikh said, for example, you know, God is unlike anything. So whatever he affirms for himself, we affirm for him what he has affirmed um, by himself. But you would not find in Islam this contradiction in terms of the concepts. It, it will cohere. But in Christian Trinity, for example, an example, you know, the case at, at point, it's incoherent. And that's why you have the very, uh, the issue being dealt by Christian philosophers over the centuries on the logical yeah. problem of the Trinity. They're trying to find out what's the logical solution to it, because indeed it's it's a problem. But you won't find Muslims saying, oh, Tawheed is a problem. And over by the, the way, I just want to also just kind of put a cherry on, on the top here. Nothing in Islam, when it in regards to the fundamental natures of your um, your salvation or the perception of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, is was left to chance. Meaning that you you literally have there. There's no question as to what Tawheed is. There's no there's no question about the the um, if like it's like a uh, two gods or or three gods or what have you. It is just clean cut. Whereas with the Christian theology, you're still trying to figure things out and your faith, the leap of faith is heavily dependent on just accepting it without actual reason. So um, yeah. it's, a, it's a big, big difference. I'm only just learning. I'm not. Yeah, it's OK. It's OK. And, I, and, and it wasn't a point of argument. It's just some things were just not many things in Islam are, are not left to like especially the fundamental you can so somebody can have like a thought exercise but it'll yeah. lead to innovation I, right? I know what you're saying but from what i'm learning at the moment i've started to read books on the akida the creeds and i've started to read yasakadi and what i'm finding is um morris that there is this statements that you're making right but it seems like when i lift the veil when I start looking back into Islamic history and theological debate, it's not as, as clear cut as what I think you're saying, because for example, um, the Sheikh mentioned about the hands and feet, there were massive debates at the beginning of Islam of what does that actually mean? If, if Allah is nothing like his creation, and then you've got hands and feet statements that Allah's like hands and feet, there was massive debates about, well, what does Taweed mean? Yeah, but Jason, sorry to no, interrupt. That's got nothing to, to do with your head. Is it logically to contradictory when, the, when Allah describes Himself having eyes or hands, for example? Is it a logical contradiction? The answer is obviously no. No. But when it comes to the concepts that in Christianity you have about God, one God or three in one God, that's where the logical contradiction comes in. We are talking about the very essence of God, how He is in terms of how he described himself there is no logical contradiction element in there this is about comprehension his uniqueness compared to the rest of the creation some people went into fire saying okay god is like the creation and say no the the, 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 the you, you're totally gone on the other side of extreme god is unlike anything of the creation so you can't make god's eyes like our eyes just because god says he has eyes it doesn't automatically follow that God's eyes are like our eyes. 
Yeah. Do you see the issue here? There is no logical contradiction here. This is about the modality of how do we understand and comprehend God's nature or his essence. The, 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 I appreciate that and I, I thank you for that, what you just said. But um, in Christian theology, we have what is called analogical language, which means that we can't com fully comprehend God, um, but language can give us some semblance of who God is. And so when you look back in the history of Islam, uh, the, I'm using Yasser Qadi's book here, so maybe he's not correct. You might be able to show something else, you know. No, what he I'm hasn't reading, said anything specifically, which, you know, what you've yeah, read. Yeah, so, is so, He's telling us uh, the history on the, the debates that happened. But the no, point I'm emphasizing, Jason, which you need to now make a link with Christianity, where yeah. in the Islamic history and historical debates between different Muslim groups where they were pointing to logical contradictions. But the, when we go to Christian history, you if, have if you go back, well, if you go back into if you go back into uh the history of, of Islamic theology, there were there were debates about epistemology, how we know who God is. And that debate was on the issue of the Quran says on one side he is nothing like his creation, and then on the other side, he has hands and feet. So, in order to where is the logical contradiction, is, Jason? You're not getting yeah. this point. I am saying they have debates between themselves, right? They, so there is a logical contradiction unless mm. you try and work it out. There was a, but Mansour, there was a massive tension with these two views. You're, you're still not getting the point. Muslims yeah. debated like every theological school in every religion. There's always going to be debates in terms of understanding the very nature of deity, right? Yeah. The concept, the nature, the essence of deity. This is something that's, you know, well, you know, across the globe in different religious belief systems. What we are seeing in Islam, even though we had different schools, theological schools, they are not accusing each other of like this logical contradiction. Oh, look, you believe in God, three gods and one God. In Christianity, you had that debate where the concept wasn't coherent. One group will say your belief is not coherent because how can you make father is god and he's one god the son is god and he's one god and the holy spirit is god he's one god and they're not three gods but one god that last final statement that they're not three gods but one god that's where the problem is it's a it's an incoherent statement I, I i hear what you're saying and yes yeah. there was those debates i don't disagree but i i, I think you're under rest your your you're downplaying i do I'm think you're downplaying i'm saying it's a huge apple and orange debate. comparison but I do, honestly, honestly, Mansour, I, I, I say this with sincerity. Keep from what reading. I'm reading, the debate between those who said that you cannot know anything about Allah because he's nothing like his creation, and then there were those schools who majored on the hands and feet, and 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 that told us knowledge about God. There were massive debates about that, and there's contradictions in those two sets of verses. Know. Where is the, the logical God. contradiction? In accepting God being unique, and yet He has certain descriptions or attributes, like He has right. speech, He has um, eyes. Where is the logical contradiction? You won't find that. That's where the Islam uniquely stands out, saying the belief is coherent, even right. among the theological schools. So, so you, which you came first? That, you don't see the difference. Which came first? Which came first? They're just interest. Which came first, the tafsir or books about Taweed? The moment when the Quran was revealed, the, the Quran was being explained by the Prophet. The Quran gives you the concept of God, which is the Tawheed. So Tafsir and Tawheed is not like a separate entities that came in different times. The moment the Prophet explained the Quran, the Quran itself explained what Allah is, who Allah is, who Allah is not, what Allah is not. So this is hand in hand in tandem that goes together in terms of the message. So you need to really see in the Christian history, the debate that you had is not what the debates we had. We had debates in terms of comprehension, the howness, the modality. You had that too, but on top of that, you had something else about the logical contradictions. But which came first, the tafsir or the books on Taweed? What did I explain to you just now? I know, you, I know you're saying about the Quran and the Hadith. My, I'm on about the authority, the, the theological works, because in Christianity there were these theological works and this development of theology. 
I'm just asking which came first, the tafsir? Because within because the tafsir, the history... within the tafsir, within the hadith literature, there's always this elements of belief expressed in explanations and in the narrations that you find. In it's the, not in worked the out in theology because the tafsir come first. Am I right or wrong? No, no. What you what conflating is this. What I am saying. That's what Yasser Kadi said. When you have when you when you have when you have an explanation of the Quran, right? Yeah. So you had very early Mufassirin. Whatever they wrote, in terms of how they described God, is already a description of Tawheed in there. Every Tafsir will have Tawheed described. The Hadith which describes about God and His attributes and so on, His nature. It's describing Tawheed. So what you are saying is artificially as a discipline studied and transmitted and, and formulated what came first and second. That's your question. This is just like an academic enterprise and interest. But what I'm saying is in Islam, you don't need to separate any of it. Islam is holistic. So about God, the Quran is the primary source. Prophet explains it. So anything that is a source of islam so you have the quran you have the hadith but in explanation of this is a total different categories of literature genre so you have the tafsir you have the sirah you have the maghazi you have fiqh and so on and so forth these are just categorization of the same thing that is described in almost everything so a hadith book is not free from not describing uh, issues of jurisprudence because the hadith tells you the prophet said no to this that is a juristic issue a legal implication in the hadith and when the jurist jurist made their juristic books or legal schools they're using this hadith and says okay this is permissible because this is what the hadith says this is impermissible this is what the hadith says so even though this is a work of a hadith but what the hadith is giving is your legal ahkam or hukum or jurisprudence within it. So you don't need to separate it because it's already embedded within it. So Quran embeds within it history, tafsir, you, you name it, all of it. I, I, I agree, but even if I grant you that, you're still not getting my point, and, and I'm, I'm still making my point, even if I grant you that. What I'm trying to get what at relevant is, is it? What relevant is it to identify when the tafsir literature became prominent, but, but when the Tawheed literature say, became prominent? But no, I've granted what you're saying, and even if I grant it, it doesn't get you to where I'm, to where you want to go. Is this is that you're making the claim, which is correct? There's a development in theological development in Christianity with the debates, okay, uh, on the Trinity and the deity of Christ. We all agree with that. But what I'm trying to get to you is. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, so correct me, is that there was a more emphasis in early Islam of the recitation rather than the actual written word. There was more of an emphasis on that. And so the reason, so with that, with that this, being the what, case... This went hand in hand. It's yeah, it went hand in hand. Yasakadi was saying that there was more of an emphasis on the recitation. Do you want to and quote the, that, what he said? Um... It's, it's in the first 30 pages if you read the first 30 pages no, no, i want i want to um, i want to hear what you what i've you got i've got an old understand. book here but i've got about 30 pages of notes i can't i can't find it exactly okay maybe another time but what i'm saying is you know sometimes our comp our comprehension of a book that we read may be something that we haven't you know clarified yeah, so you yeah. can read again and but, you can but, see but, but correct me if i'm wrong is that the, there's <laughs> a stage in the in the in the growth of the knowledge you have the tafsir, and then after the tafsir, what what comes next? Is it the tafsir that were the earliest commentators? The, the earliest the earliest scholarship is the tafsirs. That's what Yasakad is saying. Is that wrong or, or I not? I would like to hear. I would like to see what you know. That's why I'm saying. Why don't you read what Yasir Qadi right, has said right. on this? Well, I haven't got. What, the, what I I'm got... what I'm what I'm suggesting to you, if you look at Islam holistically, the Quran is the primary document, right? Now, the Quran needs to be understood. So people tried from the very beginning to explain the Quran. So tafsir came with the Quran. It didn't develop later. The Quran itself is the tafsir of the Quran. Because the best yeah, form of tafsir... 
Jason, to yeah, make no, you understand. No, let me just read the best this, all of tafsir is Al Quran Yufasiru Badu Habad. The Quran explains the Quran. Part of the Quran explains the other Quran. So within the Quran, you already have the tafsir. So tafsir didn't develop later. Tafsir itself is embedded within the Quran. Mansoor, and we had, just to add, and we had the best mufassir of all time, which was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the Quran says. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm just getting Listen, uh, yeah, early, early commentators of the, uh, the tafsir, yeah? I can't pronounce these names. Um, That's fine. This is um, Ibn Abbas. This is one six one A H. Huh? Sorry, what name? This one's after one history. One sixty one A H. Right. Yeah. And he talks about the earlier Tassia commentators is uh, Sufyan Al Tal. Thawri. <laughs> Sufyan Al Thawri. Sufyan Al Thawri. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then Yusan Ibn Waynad one nine eight Ibn Al Ibn Dinar, yeah, Ibn Dinar, and yeah, um, carry on reading. And then, and then you have early uh Karat scholars, mm -hmm. right? So, what I'm saying is that there's a progression you have these tafsirs, these then you have the Karat scholars. Is that not correct or not? No, no they, they actually, actually before the them, before them, they page were the Sahaba. Page, page 25, yeah. Before them, before them, before them, it was the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the likes of Ibn Abbas. The had a tafsir. Yeah, the likes, the likes of uh, Ibn Mas'ud. Yeah, then yeah. we had the Tabi'een. The likes, yeah. the the likes of the, the likes of uh, we had Aisha al Mu'minin radiyallahu anha. She used to give commentary on the Quran. Then we had, uh, then we had. Uh, we need like to start with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah, uh, sorry, he mentioned it. He mentioned. Yeah, he mentioned the mentioned. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that before. We had the best mufassir, which is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who taught the Sahaba, and the Sahaba taught their uh, their students. Yeah. So, so it didn't get, start. Jason, it didn't you're, start in you're asking about the tafsir. Age. We we had the Quran and the Tafsir from the time of the Prophet peace be upon him. Yeah. Right. Did right. the so Christians all, have? The did the Christians have the first century? In the first century, do you have any manuscripts of the New Testament? Uh, the, we only have parchment. I think is it people? Not, nothing in the first. Not century. of the first century. Not of. Not the even first a single century. credit card sized. You know, parchment those, or those, well, or a scrap a, or anything that's like that. A, that's a. I'm not arguing about that. That that's not. A, that's equivocation because I'm just on about. No, we're on about actually, the nature of not. God, the epistemology. Yeah. And but if the, you don't even have the primary source, which is your New Testament, in its original language, in the language where, which Jesus preached, so no original language, no first century manuscripts. Okay. So what what do you have left? From the second, third, fourth century, you have well, hearsay. Let me ask him this because I'm genuinely curious. In a language which is foreign, not the one I, Jesus I'm not going to be allowed to speak, though. But can I just say something before we, we go we on? Let you speak yeah, yourself. go ahead, man. Uh, this gonna, is the book. I'm not going to make a comment which... or argue. I just want to say this whatever uh, happens, I really appreciate that I've been able to have a really informative discussion and i have learned a lot and i've appreciated the, yeah, the conversation so thank you, you get what you give dude you came up here is all night you, you know is that the one yeah that's which the one. page number is it 28 he said 28 about, he said I'm, I'm reading i think about 25 or going a bit earlier the quote here on 25 was on a different topic but it's like 24 23 those early no. pages jason i did have a question for you bud um the yeah. reason why you're like curious about it is it because you're trying to find a bridge between like certain thought processes of Islam and Christianity, and you're you're uh, interested in walking through that bridge to have like justification to accept Islam, or are you kind of because the why I ask that is is like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't set a requirement on us to the depth of what you're exploring in order to recognize Islam as the truth, right? So 
I'm just genuinely curious as to like where did the like where is it leading for you? you my, my 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 to be honest, I'll be brutally honest. I it, it's to understand how I can critique Islam. Okay, that's cool. And and yeah. and so the the thing is, I never get an opportunity to flash ideas out whether they're correct or not because yeah. I, I, I like to go to the sources and Christians very often are not reading Yasukadi. They're not reading. I mean, he mentioned many scholars. I, I want to go back and read these ancient scholars and find you should, out. Man. You should. I totally encourage it. As a matter of fact, yeah. and so just I don't get an opportunity to talk. So yeah, if, you, if you just shoot me down, it's helpful for me because I'm learning. But Absolutely. I'm trying to develop my understanding of Islam. I also enjoy scholarship and and to be honest, I, I even though I'm an arch enemy of these guys, I, I do respect Mansoor, even though we've clashed and Hashim and Hamza, and we I say some things that are not nice sometimes, and I apologize <laughs> for that. But I do I do like these guys, and uh, <laughs> check it. I, uh... I, I like the, I like I like the courage. And so that's why I'm attracted to come and discuss. Look, like, we, we get it, man. You, you know, you're, you've built your entire foundation on your beliefs and all the studies that you've spent. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, when you cross domains, it's basically someone telling you like, hey, dude, you've spent your whole life believing what you believe. You're an idiot. <laughs> like, and, then, and then here we are having a conversation. So um, it takes some thick skin, right? And I respect that. Uh, I will say, though, that as you're going and reading some of these, um, like, for example, when you're reading Yasir Qadi, right? First off, he is not considered like a classical scholar of Islam, right? He yeah. is a Mufassid and he has knowledge, but he he has a specific area of expertise. And he's also said some things that quite literally would like take you out of the fold of Islam if you were to ask me, right? right. right. So uh, just be careful. The, the second thing I want to mention is when you're critiquing some of the things that are being said, understand that there is a, with Islam, a first, obviously, just like Brother Mansur said, and uh, Brother uh, Sheikh Ibn Hazm had said, that it's first we start with the Quran to conduct an exegesis of the Quran, then we go to the Prophet, and then from there we go to the righteous predecessors, right? There is a consensus that happens amongst the righteous predecessors when it comes to issues. And what I caution you is, as you're going through your research, when you read the opinion of, let's say, some person, when you're critiquing it, you're not critiquing Islam. You're critiquing their opinion, which can go right. against the majority consensus. So what, I, what I, I hope that as you're going through the journey of building out the toolkit that you're going through, that when you build these critiques, understand that the, the per, your, your uh, interlocutor or whoever you're talking to is going to say, okay, well, that's not the majority opinion. So like, for example, if you're heading down the Mu'tazila route, we, we just don't follow that route. <laughs> so like, it's not the majority opinion. And you're going to be going down a route where people had like a I'm sure that it probably started off as like a genuine curiosity, but this is this is the devil. And what he does is he gets you to step into innovation and you can't like, for example, we don't take like Greek philosophy and like all these concepts and try to merge it with Islam. No, that's a that's an, an innovation and an impurity. Right. So remember, the, the purity is Qur'an first, right? Because it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the Prophet, والسلام, and then the righteous predecessors. If there's a, a deviation from any one of those three, more primarily the Qur'an and the Sunnah, then you'll be in trouble, right? So this is what happened to these folks, is they tried to you know, create like this fusion of thought, right? Mm -hmm. And although it may have had the best of intentions, but the result was complete innovation. And, and the result could even be like falling into pure disbelief because of that. So it's, you know, um, I respect your and admire your curiosity, but and, and not to try to discourage you to, to keep digging deep, but sticking into like the actual fundamentals of things and, and solidifying the fundamentals will help you as to where you can um, kind of 
uh, navigate your curiosity, knowing that as soon as they deviate away from the majority consensus on what's fundamental, it would be a waste of time for you. So, but it, it, I appreciate it, but it's hard to get uh, a proper dialogue and to thrash out ideas because, like, if I come on, like, if I go on a Dower show, uh, it automatically becomes like like a conflict type thing. Whereas here today, I've been able to like ask questions. Obviously, I'm trying to develop and understand from polemics and debate situation, but I'm genuinely, genuinely interested in learning more. It's not just for argument's sake, it's a genuine thirst for knowledge. So I've been able to ask questions and I've been treated with the utmost respect. And that's really helped me a lot. And I wish I could have more dialogue like this but it's very difficult to get get that dialogue but i appreciate you should sit with people uh, of knowledge bro you should you should try to find a, a scholar that's local to you or at least a student of knowledge because they will be able to first off it will be a clean slate they 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 you wouldn't go in there with the the thing of like oh hey i'm, I'm all about apologetics and critique and this that no go in with a clean slate and say i'm exactly what you're saying here i'm genuinely trying to learn i have some really strange off the wall questions because my brain naturally gravitates that way. And if you, if you sit down with them and have this exchange of thought, they would be able to give you detail upon detail upon detail, many of them purely from memory. I mean, you know, if you, if you actually sit with someone and I've, I've had the pleasure of being surrounded and in certain times with people of knowledge, dude, they make you feel like, like, they're very humble people, but subhanAllah, man, they are like, they have forgotten more than I will ever know in my life. Like, it's the scariest thing in the world. Like, you ask them certain things and they'll, it, like, it's almost like they're reading from like a, a teleprompter, an invisible teleprompter in front of their head. And then they can show you all the threads and all the supporting evidence and why this is this and why it's not. So you have to prove things back and forth. And you know, um, you'll, you'll get an idea of just how, like, um, like how blessed they are in that realm. And then if you take that and transpose it to the people of the past, and you'll recognize just how deep of vessels some of these people were, like how deep of vessels like Ibn Taymiyyah was, or uh, Ibn Al-Qayyim was, or um, you know, you, you'll, you're like, your brain will explode, like to think that like a 10 year old or a 12 year old memorized like 50,000 ahadith, uh, including like the bad ones and know how to narrate it to you and know who the chain was when they passed away, what their memory was like, what their character was like. And if you were to ask them, he would be able to give you all these things. Like it'll really, really blow your mind, man. So just think of like chat GPT on steroids. You know what I'm saying? Compare them to chat GPT, bro. Well, I know, and even chat GPT is an insult. Yeah, like super, super computer. It's somewhere. insane, man. It's insane. Like I remember one time, you know, subhanAllah, I was, uh, I was doing Umrah. And um, they have these uh, gatherings where you just sit and you listen to the sheikh, right? Like either it's like hadith or whatever. Now, albeit it was purely in Arabic, right? And my Arabic is, is super minimal. But um, this is how humble they were. I lit I pulled out my phone and I like started to record the shake and the, the student just turns over to me and he just gives me a hug and he takes the phone and puts it down. He didn't say anything. And I, I completely understood what was happening. He basically don't record the guy. Just sit there, be in the moment, listen, whatever word you can catch, you can catch whatever you can't, you can't. And these guys are just pen and paper and, and most of them are just memory just sitting there patiently chilling. And it was like, it was a very humbling experience because subhanAllah, man, this shake was just going on and on and on and on and on for hours. I sat there for three and a half hours and the guy like it's, he wasn't even winded. Like he didn't even, it was nothing to him. It was crazy, man. So point being is if you really want to probe into the knowledge and you really want to get that like fruitful discussion, um, I'm glad that like the book of, uh, uh, with the, from Yasir Qadi really piqued your interest into this stuff, but just have an end goal. 
don't let it be uh, don't let it be for not because when you're sitting with these people these vessels of knowledge um, let the it the most be important thing you're when you're seeking knowledge is sincerity you know? yeah and pray Allah to God, just pray, pray to the Almighty God. God say to guide guide us to the truth because at the mm -hmm. end of the day look Jason we all want to be in paradise we all want to be in the presence of God Almighty okay and that that is only reserved for the people of paradise not the ones who are in hellfire so whatever baggage whatever egos we have put them all aside sincerely pray to God Almighty okay because you know if anyone can help us and that is Almighty God even Jesus himself when he wanted something he prostrated to God and he prayed to him did he not so do that follow right. Jesus you know follow the way of Jesus <laughs> let's not get into that bro all right let's, all right. Anyway, let's keep it let's under the there, Jason. It's, it's, time, Jason. it's a good step in the right direction um going into yeah, our you. sources learning more yeah good and uh i'll see you on god willing the 4th of august guys we'll be coming down let's hope so yeah, yeah. Sure. Right. Take care. thank you everybody thank you so much thank you you're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.